People often accuse AJ of claiming and convincing you that you are Mary Magdalene because you're young and pretty. How do you respond to these accusations? Yeah, there's a lot I'd like to say about this because it's something that often um, people will cast this sort of aspersion. I feel it's an aspersion on AJ's character, basically. Mm. Uh, in a, Sometimes people, interviewers do it in like a cheeky kind of a way. Like, oh, it's very convenient though, isn't it, that Mary's young and pretty. And, and um, I, I, I often feel afterwards, oh, there's so much I wanted to say in that moment, but it's a moment and it's gone. And so it's great that we have the opportunity here to talk more about it. Mm. Um, probably the first thing I'd say is that I don't feel particularly young and pretty myself. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, I don't feel that um, he's hit the lottery in terms of uh, attractiveness or, or youth even. I'm 35 in a couple of months, so I wouldn't say that I'm particularly young, though I'm younger than a lot of people. Yeah. And, but, you know, I sort of feel like I'm not just 35, I suppose. I feel that I have had a lot of life, and so I don't feel particularly young. But let's get on to really how I would respond to this accusation. And that is to say, firstly, that AJ hasn't really had it that easy, I suppose, since he met me. Like, it hasn't been... He didn't wander up to me and say, oh, you're Mary Magdalene, and I fell into his arms and said, this is wonderful, <laughs> and let's please go and have lots of sex. <laughs> it wasn't the movies. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the movies or anything resembling it, except maybe a little bit like a, a horror movie, maybe. <laughs> um, a bit extreme. A bit extreme, maybe. But, but let's, let's explain a bit more. Yeah. So uh, when I met AD, I was really confronted about this idea of, um, him being Jesus, me being Mary Magdalene in a public way. Mm. I, I felt really afraid about it. I felt really confronted about now that I started to allow all these emotions um, that I'd been suppressing all my life, what was coming up. Things were coming out. I was angry for the first time in my life, really. And that I found that really disturbing and distressing of what's going on. You know, I just, I'm feeling... Um, a lot of things that I, I can feel were already inside of me uh, and I had some sense of wanting to grow, but growing this way seemed very confronting. I also, as we've mentioned in previous questions, you know, the way AJ wanted to have a relationship with me was based on no expectations, no barter, no codependency, just love and desire. And for me, that was really confronting as well. I felt like, um, like vulnerable. I couldn't. There was no way I could manipulate this man, and he wanted. All he wanted to do was love me, but that felt really confronting. And I, because I was really afraid of how my family was reacting, how the how I felt the world would respond to these things. I got I got really afraid and then angry. I did, I wanted to not have a relationship with him. I broke up with him like about three times. So we're in and out of relationship. It was quite, you know, it wasn't sort of this walk in the park for AJ. He, he was coping with a lot of emotions that I was throwing his way and a lot of blame and a lot of desire to control him. So I wouldn't say that, you know, it probably felt very convenient to him. Yeah. I know how he feels and he feels or he knows that I'm his soulmate and he doesn't want anyone else. But um, I've often said to him, babe, if you were going to choose, you know, if you were some <laughs> evil mastermind and you were going to choose people to be members of these 14 soul people who've returned to Earth, you could have made better choices <laughs> <laughs> because I'm tenacious and stubborn and not very humble and I get angry. And, you know, a lot of us are like that because there's a lot of fear in us. Mm. A lot of us resist a lot. And so when anyone is in resistance to their feelings, they can become pretty nasty. Yep. So, yeah, so I wouldn't say this implication that AJ's just chosen me because I'm young and pretty, yeah. um, that doesn't really match. There's actually a lot of other women who would like to be with AJ, who find him really attractive and who would like to feel like they're Mary Magdalene 
Um, so he could have, you know, if he was going to go shopping <laughs> for yeah. a relationship, he could have done that. And he did it because that's not the nature of the man. Um, but certainly he's, he's not been in a situation where it's all been... Like, I've been adoring of him. Mm. And there's been times in our relationship, as I said, where we've split up, where we haven't had sex for periods of six months because I've been working through an issue, um, where I've you know, where I've really resisted love and that hasn't always been easy for him either. And so this implication that he's just sort of chosen a convenient partner so that he can have lots of sex or, you know, feel important because he has a pretty girlfriend or something, that's, that's not the case at all. Simply based on the fact that it hasn't really been an easy time for him in terms of me just opening my heart and falling in love. Mm. The second thing I probably want to say about that is that AJ's quite a catch himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a gorgeous looking man who has just got a beautiful heart. He, all he desires to do is to love and to serve others. And so this, when people say, um, you know, it's quite convenient for you, AJ, that Mary's young and pretty, I think, well... It's quite convenient for me. <laughs> you know, yeah. I feel like I won the lottery when it comes to soulmates. I feel like I, this, is, this is amazing, you know. And while, as I said, in the beginning times, I didn't always feel like that. You know, I felt really a lot of resistance and quite angry a lot of the time. These days when, you know, when people say that, I think, wow, you know, I actually I feel like he's a pretty amazing, attractive guy himself so I don't feel like he's sort of I don't know that's that's what I always want to say anyway <laughs> probably the biggest thing though in responding to these kind of comments is just that it it casts a lot of um it's sort of an underhanded way of accusing AJ of being someone who is just looking he's preying on women in some way for sex or for you know he just wants to be in the company of someone who's young and pretty rather than seeing that he actually wants to have a, a an adult loving relationship with his soulmate and that there's only one of me and that even in times when it it seemed like we couldn't be together he wasn't looking for someone else mm. and in fact before we met he was celibate for five years because he knew he didn't want to have a relationship with anyone but his soulmate. And then obviously when we met, we didn't, we're still working towards having a really harmonious and loving relationship. So, yeah, I suppose it, the, the main thing I feel when people say these kinds of things is it's a, often a simple offhand kind of a comment, but there's a lot in it that is really kind of insulting to AJ and towards me. It kind of makes me seem like I'm just a bit of a bimbo <clears throat> um, and but it also implies that he's sort of chosen me and that's not the way it works with soulmates God created the two of you together and there's no choice about who the other half of you is and both of us respect that and AJ really loves that and that's not um, that's a beautiful part of his character that he wants to love only one woman who is the other half of him and that he's willing to be really humble to whatever comes up in that process so that we can be closer together. And that's very different from the accusation that somehow he's selected a young pretty girl to, and convinced her to be Mary Magdalene. Yeah. 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 I agree. I think it's, it's, quite, a, um, it's quite a yuck comment, actually. Like, it yeah. feel pretty gross. Yeah. As you yeah. say, it's pretty yucky towards AJ as well. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, as you say, so many of these comments are made underhandingly or the person who makes them, and I'm, I've been responsible, make not that, that comment, yeah. but other comments, without even thinking what, like, you don't realise the impact of what you're actually saying mm. and, and just the put down that it, it's towards you guys but to anybody, you know, yeah. that, that you make these comments to. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot there's a lot that can be revealed about our underlying beliefs in little offhand comments and um, th I feel there's a lot of cynicism on the planet about yeah. um, a lot of people don't believe that people could just be good and be motivated by a desire to be good people and because of that there's a lot of suspicion cast at AJ a lot of the time. Yeah. 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 
You get sucked in it as well, I suppose. Well, you, well, it's both of you, really, isn't it? I mean, though, in this particular one, they are claiming you're more of a bimbo than, a, <laughs> than an intelligent <laughs> half of a soul. Yes. Yeah. I think also because AJ, as we've said in other questions that we've been talking about today, because I have been reluctant to yeah. be forward, because I have um, wanted to hide in the background, because I've wanted to sort of... Um, control him into not being as transparent and open and direct with people and he hasn't listened to that and he has been open and direct with people a lot of people he, he often cops a lot of the um, the suspicion or the attack because in a sense my lack of certainty or um, it's not really a lack of certainty my fear driven actions um, mean that people don't take me seriously yeah. And that's certainly something that I'm, that I'm working through now. Like, I feel that I want to be counted as, you know, as myself and this is what I believe and this is who I am. But that's not always been the case. So he's sort of copped a lot of... And also, I suppose, saying you're Jesus on the planet today is different to saying you're Mary Magdalene. Yeah. Uh, there's so much expectation and fear about... Expectation of who Jesus should be and then fear about a man saying that he's Jesus and what dark motivations he might have, it means that AJ is actually exposed to a lot of people's um, attack and ridicule and it's almost like he has to prove himself 70 times over yeah. um, and even then it's not enough for people to trust him or to believe him. Yeah. Yeah. Big challenges, hey? Well, yeah. not, it's not really, it, it, uh, well, that's my stuff speaking because I don't think that um, just from you know, our, co our conversation today and the questions that you've answered, the more that you are, are owning who you are and being yourself, it's actually like the more that um, I'm around you, it's like, well, yeah, I'm only thinking this now, it's like that you don't question you so much, Yeah. you know, and it's like I can... Like I know with Jesus, I can see it's my issues. You know, he's very firm and, and whatever. And the same, same with you. It's like when you, you guys are very firm or when you're firm with who you are or whatever, yeah. then, then it does put it back on the person if they're willing to see that, I think. Yeah, if, um, it depends on how humble the person is. Yeah. But I think probably you were saying about the challenges. Hmm. I feel these things are challenges to us while we still have fear about them. Yeah. So for me, it still feels challenging to be really public and open about who we are, but it's becoming less challenging the more I deal with the fears I have associated with it. So I think um, for any of us with any challenge that we face, the more willing we are to release the fears and grief we have around those things. And I know AJ has been in that process for a lot more years than me. And I know that he's had to grieve at certain points just the level of um, hatred or ridicule that comes towards him simply being himself. But because he's done that, it's not really so much of a challenge for him anymore. And I've, I firmly believe that both of us will reach a point where it's not challenging us in the slightest. Yeah. Um, and he's pretty close to that point, especially when it comes to talking about who he is. Um, but any challenge that we face, as we develop this relationship with God and deal with our fears and our false beliefs, essentially, around those challenges, then they, they begin to not be challenges anymore. Yeah. And that's, that's a really hopeful thing, isn't it? That's the exciting thing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh, thank you. Well, mm -hmm.